to show that just because you're little, you're a kid or a teen or whatever, that you can still be fired up for God just like the adults can. When you're united for Christ, you're always ready to share the word with other people. Super excited this morning. It is New Year. It is 2024. Can we get a hand clap for the New Year, everybody? Can we get a hand clap? Man, I am super excited. A new year, a new day, a new time. And how about a brand new you? I'm really looking forward to kicking this series off. A brand new you for January 2024. Thank you all for tuning in here with us at the Church With Our Walls with the Ignite Youth Ministry. Remember to like, subscribe, and share to let everybody know we have going on here at the Church With Our Walls. I'm ready to get this thing going. It's 2024. Caleb, team, do what you do. All right, somebody say amen. I said somebody say amen. amen. All right, if y'all ready to do 2024, right, I need y'all to get up. Come on, y'all need y'all to stand up. Here we go. Let's go start this right.
2024, God's got a blessing just for you. How many people know that right now? Because he does.
hearts right now to the Lord and know that even in this year, he's going to be with you every day, every minute, every hour. So if you know that, I just want you to just lift your hands right now. And I just want you to think of something right now that God has done for you. And I just want you to say thank you. All right, that wasn't quite loud enough, because I know he done did something for you already. It's been a couple weeks in 2024 already, so I just need y'all to say thank you right now.
one more chance to lift your voice up to the Lord. Somebody say always. Always. So if you trust the Lord, one more time, just lift your voices. Father, I trust you. Somebody help me. Father, I trust you. Father, I trust you. Always. Always. Somebody say, I need you. Hey, good morning, everybody. How's it going? I'm really excited to really kick this new year off um, with just being a brand new person. Brother Smith, a brand new version of myself. This particular series is actually titled A Brand New You, right? How many of you all want to be a brand new you? Just raise your hand. You want to be a brand new you in 2024. You want to be a brand new you. You want to be different. You want to be transformed. You want to be changed. You don't want to be the version of yourself that you were last year, Zach. Because last year's version of Zach is not the version that we want in 2024. You understand what I'm saying? The 2024 version of Caleb Slack is not the version that you want for yourself in 2024. 2023, it was there, but now we're here. And so when you think about where you are right now, when you think about like this new year, it's about understanding and knowing you have the opportunity to be a brand new you. But when you think about being the brand new you, it's really about you taking the, um, 
a retrospective look at yourself, P. You understand what I'm saying? To look at yourself and see who you are and what you've done and what you desire to do to be a better version of yourself, to be a brand new you. And when you think about being a brand new you, it really comes with a cost and a price in regards to being proactive about your life based on the necessary changes that you need to make as an individual. It's about you being honest. It's about you being open. It's about you being authentic. And it's about you being real. So when you think about being a brand new you, it's about you understanding and knowing the things you desire to do in 2024. But yet, how many of you all had or establish New Year's goals for this year or New Year's resolutions? Raise your hand, right? All right, that's pretty much everybody did that, right? And now here it is, Katrina. I don't know if you know this particular stat, Katrina, but the average person, the average person that established New Year's resolutions and New Year's goals and things they're going to do in the new year, Caleb, the average person only hold true to those goals and those New Year resolutions for at least about three and a half months, P. About three and a half months. Somebody said, like, for the new year, I'm going to exercise more. I'm going to be more fit. I'm going to be more healthy. I'm not going to have abs of meals. I'm going to have abs of steel because I'm going to work out. I'm going to be intentional by exercising, getting my heart right. I'm going to be intentional. But the average person only be true to the goals and the resolutions they actually have for about three and a half months. And at three and a half months, the average individual go back to doing the things, Zach, that they used to do. And so when you think about, like, where you are, when you think about your life in regards to your goals, your hopes, and your aspirations for 2024, you have the opportunity and the capacity to be a brand new you, but are you truly going to be open, authentic, and genuine and real with yourself to know that God has created you to be new, but it's based on three fundamental things I'm going to talk about here shortly that you must do to be a brand new you. Let's give him a hand clap of praise again this morning. Everybody, let's celebrate, let's celebrate, let's celebrate. All right. Here there's a scripture I'm going to read. It's simple. Paul wrote it because we know Paul. Now, now the, this is the author, right? Just I'll get a little background about the author. In 2 Corinthians, it was written by, by Paul. And before, just get our background. You can go read the whole book. You, you can actually read the whole story about Paul because before, before Paul, because Brother Thomas, you know, I, I can't take it for granted, Brother Thomas, like, you know, that everybody know who Paul is, right? P. Everybody know, do, do you know Paul? Do you know who he was before he was Paul? You, girl, you're so spiritual. You know what I'm saying? And so, but, but I, I can't take it for granted. That, do, do you know Paul? Do you know who he was before he was Paul? Okay, he says, you know, now, and I got to look into the camera. Nah, nah. For those on the other side of the screen, do you know Paul? Did you know Paul before he was Paul when his name was Saul? Because before he was Paul, he was Saul. So Saul was like the old version of Paul. Do you, remember, you know who Saul, you know that? You so spiritual. And so now here it is. Now Paul is the, the author and the writer of Certain Corinthians. And to give you context, the old version but Paul was just like, he was just, he was just, he was just, he was wild, he was crazy, he was, he was foul, he was, he was just, didn't love Christians, didn't love believers, he murdered Christians, murdered believers, he persecuted, he, he did all the unrighteous, all the unhealthy, all the foul and cruel things to Christian believers. He was just like a, a bad dude. And not only did he actually like try to, um, let people know that they need to persecute Christians, he actually went and did it himself. But his life changed. He became a better version. He was made new. He had this experience with Christ. He had this experience that changed his way of thinking. He went from Saul to Paul. But now he writes... Everybody has the capacity and opportunity to not be who they used to be. This man persecuted and killed anybody that said they went to, if anybody that believed or listened to Christian music or went to church, you could, you could have been his victim. You understand what I'm saying? Just your presence here alone. Now, this is the person who wrote this. Now, this is after he was transformed and changed. It reads in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. It's a simple and it's an easy scripture. You can go 
and read it in detail. <clears throat> it reads, and I want you to think about, as I read the scripture, read the text, think about being a brand new you. Just when you think about like the old person that you were and that you used to be and the old habits that you actually had, I want you to think about those old habits and those old things as you actually read this particular scripture, all right? 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 reads, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, who is anyone? Any one of us, any individual. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone. It's simple, it's easy, direct. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, anyone, he, she, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. She is a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. And so when you think about being the brand new you, it's really, it really boils down to you understanding and knowing that there are specific things that you must do. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the old is gone and the new has come. Therefore, there's a conjunction, Right? Therefore, sets the stage for you all to actually understand that there's a reason why each of you all are here today. And so when you think about it, it boils down to a critical decision that you must make right here. Here it is right here. It's a, it's a critical decision. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, so to be in Christ is critical that you understand, no, that there's, there's a decision that you must make to be in Christ. It's critical. Because you don't want to be the version of yourself that you were last year. You want to be the version of yourself, Zach, in the past. Zach, you, you don't want to be the version of yourself when you were like, when you were like 14. Because you know, you, when you were 14, dude, you just did stuff, man. I, 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 you know what I'm saying? We, Zach does not want to go back to when he was 14 years old. Zach had to make a critical decision in his life in regards to what it is that he wanted to do because the 14-year-old Zach that you all don't know, he was a bad dude. But yet, he had to make a critical decision in his life to be transformed to not be that young man that he was then. But yet, I'm not saying he was just like unworthy. He was worthy in this madness. He was worthy in this badness, but yet it boils down to you understanding and knowing that you have to make a critical decision to be in Christ. Here it is right here. Let me give you a point. Let me give you a point about critical. The decision is critical because life is short. And when you think about critical, right here it is right here. According to Webster, critical means urgently important, being or relating to an illness or condition involving danger or death. Your life is just that important. That's why it's a critical decision. So when you think about everything that goes on in the world today, and when you think about the decisions that we make, sometimes you may think that some sometimes you may think that the decisions that you make are really not that important, but understand this: every decision has validity and power when you think about the big picture of life based on who God has called and created you to be. And so we think about those, those decisions for the most part that are, that are wrong, bad, and different in regards to the decisions that we make. We have over 60,000 plus thoughts a day. And of those 60 plus thousand thoughts that we actually have in a day, Percy, 80% of those thoughts are negative, 20% of those thoughts are positive, but yet there's one decision that you need to make today that, that will really change the overall aspect of your life in regards to being the best version of yourself, to honor, to live, and to be all that God has called you to be. But will you make that decision in regards to your perspective, your mind, and your heart, knowing that God has designed you to be greater than what you are, but it boils down to understanding and knowing it's about, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. Because to truly be in Christ, you have to make a decision to be in Christ. You have to make a decision to surrender and live and give your life to Christ to be the best version of yourself. And yet when you think about where you are right now, what critical decisions do you need to make in your life to be a brand new you? What critical decisions do you need to make to be the best version of yourself? Because in life, it's not so much about where you start, but it's all about where you finish. Yeah, it's one thing to make a critical decision in regards to being new but when you think about being a brand new you and to be the best version of yourself, 
You have to make a critical decision, but the next thing that you must do and need to do is have a changed heart. In order to become a new creation that God desires for you to be, you must have a changed heart. Contrary to what some people believe, the heart is not just a muscle that pumps blood throughout your body. The heart is your core being, the very essence of who you are. Here it is. We all have this void in our heart that we try to fill with many different things. The heart. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creation, so you got to make a decision. So therefore, you make the decision, you change, but when you change, you have to change from the inside out. You got to change in regards to um, what's in your heart, what you love, what do you desire. And when you think about the things that you, you love and the things that you desire and the things that you, that you may put before our Lord and Savior, think about this for a moment. You have to be honest with yourself. You have to change your heart. For the things that you love can separate you from being all that God has called you to be. And so if you realize and recognize and know that, what? It's going to require you to make a what? Critical decision to have a changed heart in regards to being the brand you knew that you desire to be. And once you realize that and live, live by that, your life will be so much greater and better. But yet then here it is. It's always easier said than done, but yet I believe P has to become a, it has to become a spiritual cycle of your life where you understand and know who you are and the things that can actually hold you back. You understand what I'm saying, Brother Thomas? You know the things that can actually hold you back. You have a changed heart, Caleb, but yet you're faced with the same issues and challenges every day, every month, every week, but yet at the same time, if your heart is right, you'll be in tune to the battle, to the struggle, to the situation, to be ready to hit the reset button to make that critical decision in regards to having to change heart to be all that God has called you to be because you understand and know, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. The old is gone. Let's keep the old back there. The new has come because why? I want to be a brand new you. You want to be a brand new you. We all want to be a brand new you. But it requires us to make a conscientious decision, Zach. And in making a decision, we have to change our heart in regards to those things that we desire, those things that we love. But yet, there's a battle, but yet, you're not too young to make the decision. And once you make the decision, it's all about how can you make it a lifestyle in regards to how you function, live, and go in your daily life. Number one, make a critical decision. Be in tune to the fact that you have to have a changed heart. Right here, listen, listen to this for a moment. There's an artist by the name of Big Daddy Weave, right? He's, he's a Christian artist, Big Daddy Weave. I don't know if y'all fans of Big Daddy Weave, but I mean, he's a believer, but his name is Big Daddy Weave. And these are some words from a song that he actually wrote, and it's called In Christ. And when you think about a changed heart, but these are some of the words from one of Big Daddy Weave's song, In Christ. It reads this. In Christ, I can do all things. In Christ, I mount up on eagle's wings. In Christ, I wait for a great reward that I, um, that I have in store. In Christ, I have his righteousness. In righteousness, in Christ, I have what I confess. In Christ, I don't worry about all the rest because everything I need to be is in Christ. My life, my heart, my mind, my soul, my perspective, my understanding, my meaning is in Christ. And you only can feel and live and understand and speak that, live that, and sing that when you have a changed heart. Next point. Because I want you all to understand this. Being in Christ makes you a new person. Being in Christ levels you up from where you are right now to be the brand new you, the brand new you in regards to being a better version of yourself. And once you make a critical decision, right, you have a clean heart, then you are now, now you have what? A clean start. We have a clean start. We're not the old version, we're the new version. You have a clean start. Anybody, anybody, we have any track runners? Anybody run, run track, know anything about track? So you run track, what are you running track? You run the 400? So when you run track, when you get down, the start, he typically says, runners, take your mark, get set, and then you run, right? 
and then you only run when you hear the gun, right? But when the starter said, run or take your mark, gets set, and somebody jumps, what do they do? They have a restart. It's a restart. Because you're on track, and the starter said, run or take your mark, get set, and somebody jump, <laughs> pow, pow, come back. We got to have a restart. We got to have a restart. And so, what I want y'all to understand, a lot of us, and, they, and they, call it, they call it like a false start. So you have the false start so you can have a restart. But think about this, you have a false start because why? You have the false start because you started too early, right? You jumped the gun. And a lot of us have actually lived our life functioning beyond the false start. It's like we're going about life, We've jumped the gun, you know what I'm saying? And we've been the version of Zach that Zach was when he was 14 years old and just walk around in this false way of living and thinking. But yet at the same time, when you live by this scripture, you have a restart. By having that restart, you have a clean start. Because why? Therefore, if any, anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. But yet you have a fresh start, a clean start, a new start. The old is there. The new has come. How many want a clean start? How many of y'all want a clean start? I want a clean start. I don't want to be the version of myself that I was a long time ago. And you're always going to be tested. I got in a car accident. I close. Got in a car accident this past week on Tuesday. I mean, I'm, I'm on medication right now. I'm back a little tight. Got, Pete got another accident, man. Got rear-ended. Somebody just slammed, lady just slammed into the back of me. I'm driving. I'm minding my business. I mean, I'm, I'm driving. You know what I'm saying? I got my, my right hand at 3 o'clock, my left hand at 9 o'clock. You know what I'm saying? I'm in left-hand lane. I'm looking at my rearview mirror, you know, checking my mirrors, making sure everything is cool. I got at least um, two car lengths behind the cars in front of me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm driving. You know what I'm saying? I'm, 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 I'm good. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing all the things I need to do as to be the best version of myself as a driver. P. And I'm driving, and I'm minding my business. I'm not, I'm not being distracted by my phone. And I'm like, hey, I'm driving, Zay. I'm driving, and I'm focused, I'm locked in, and I'm driving, and all of a sudden, it's like, boom! I get hit from the back. I'm like, I know! Somebody, and I'm thinking it's the 18-wheeler behind me, Zay. I'm thinking it's the 18-wheeler, but the 18-wheeler is, is, is this, is, is as far enough distance where it didn't hit me. I'm like, man, who hit me? Man, somebody, I just, I just got in an accident. I was in one accident like about 15 months ago, and now here it is, I'm in another accident. And so I get hit, and this woman, she hits another car, she goes up against the wall, and she's pinting her car, and everybody kind of paused, looking around like, man, who hit me, right? And so at least see this woman to the side, and I'm looking at my vehicle still drivable, and I drive over onto the shoulder, and I get out, and I go check on the lady. I'm like, you know, I'm, I make sure I was straight first. And the lady, like, she's like, you hit me. I'm like, hold on. You hit me from the back. She's like, you hit me. I'm like, ma'am, relax. Let's call in, Melissa. Let's call her. She's like, you hit me. I'm like, okay, you know, she's doing too much right now. So I, I check on the other guy who she hit. Right, so I checked on the other guy, and I said, man, let's go down here and check on the woman. You know, we checked on the woman and everything. I, and she's like, you hear me? I said, ma'am, call her. Ambulance police, right? And I just walk away. I go get in my car, and we're talking about a brand new you, right? So this is a challenge for the first, second week of the year. And so here it is. I'm sitting in the car, and all of a sudden I see this guy. He's, he flips something out, and he just starts taking pictures of my car. And he walked down up on me. I'm like, hold on, let me get up out the car. I get up out the car, brand new you. I got out the car, I'm like, excuse me, sir, what are you doing? He's like, he like, you hit my wife, you hit my wife. I'm like, sir, calm down and relax. He's like, you hit my wife. He's like, you about to get it, buddy. I'm like, hey, man, calm down and relax. Now, my wife, man, I said, I said, man, you, you hit my wife. I said, man, you were not even here. I said, calm down and relax. Oh, I got my laws and everybody coming up here. 
I said, hey, man, this third time. He in my face right now. And so he's in my face. And the other guy that the woman hit, he takes out his camera phone and starts videoing the situation because he's, like, totally violating my space right now, Pete. You know what I'm saying? He said, man, you hit my wife. I said, I said, hey, man, dude, I need you to relax. I don't want you to have me go to being who I used to be because you done picked the wrong one. You done picked the wrong one. I'm not who I used to be, but there's a person who I used to be. You pick the wrong one, take a step back, relax, calm and chill. Because I'm a brace, I'm a brand new you. But you did pick the wrong one. I need you to calm down and relax that. He closed his mouth and he walked out. Because he it got to a point where the old, the old me, Brother Smith, the old me P was like, oh, oh, oh. I'm like, dude, dude, you better chill. But it says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the old has gone and the new has come. Based on my heart, based on the clean start, Zay, he didn't get that old dude. He ain't get it. But that old dude did kind of like, you know what I'm saying? I kind of felt him a little bit. You know what I mean? Because we are emotional creatures. I got to be honest with you. But God set the stage for me to still be who he's called me to be. It's not about where you start in life. It's all about where you finish. Let's give me a hand, a couple of phrases more in there, everybody. And so today, if you're tuning in and you want a clean start, all you got to do is make one critical decision. And if you make that one critical decision, everything about your life will be made new. Everything about your life will be changed. Everything about your life will be different. Because in life, it's about you realizing, recognizing, understanding, and knowing about what it is that you need to do to be the best version of you. So if you're here today and you feel led to make a decision for Christ, or if you're tuning in today and you feel led to make a decision for Christ, you have an opportunity to be a brand new you. The doors of church are now open. We're going to come before you just quickly to engage you where you are. So if you're led to give your life to Christ, rededicate and recommit your life to Christ, or be, part of, be a part of the church membership, knowing the church as a ministry, we are here for you. you right now. you right now. Dear Heavenly Father, let us pray. Dear Lord, I pray and ask that you would keep each and every one of our youth that are tuning in or that are part of this service today, that they would truly understand and know what it means, Father God, to be made new as they live their life before you, Lord. I pray that you keep them this coming year. I pray you continue to be a rock and the stabilization in their lives, Father God, as they be the best version of themselves, Lord. I thank you for just this moment and this time, Father God, that we could come before you to just celebrate the opportunities, Father God, to just live our life and live it to the fullest, Lord. I pray right now that you will be with us and keep us, Father God, as we go in this year to be the best that you've called us to be. In your name we pray. Amen.
If you're tuning in today and you made the decision for Christ as a church, as a ministry of the team, we celebrate you. And if you made a decision, go to our website, tcww.org, and go to the guest tab. Once you go to the guest tab, click accept Christ and, or join the church, and somebody from our assimilation team will connect with you. And if you made that decision as a church, as a ch family, as a team, we give you a virtual hand clap, a virtual round of applause, and a virtual hug because you made a critical decision that would change your life, that will allow you to be a brand new you. And I just thank you on behalf of our pastor, Dr. Ralph Douglas West. I call him the Big Aristotle, that you're tuning in with us each and every week to connect and be engaged with everything we're doing here at the Church Without Walls with the Ignite Youth Ministry. To get more details and more information, go to our website, tcww.org, to connect and be a part and engage with us. So right now, about to close this thing out, we'll see you all on next week. And we're about to hear from our pastor, Dr. Ralph Douglas West, with the benediction. Look this way. I want to bless you as we prepare to leave this place and go into the world to serve. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face smile upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord